first hand. Would you stand with us, please, number 323. 323 in your favorite hymns of praise. Get your hymn and join in with us. Standing on the promises. <clears throat> Amen. You may be seated. 4 7. 4 7.
some men to help me with the offering at this time. We take two offerings on Sunday morning. The first one is our tithes and offerings. The second is for our mission program. So <clears throat> have uh, Brother David Gambrell and Miss Karen Gambrell visiting with us this morning. I'd like to ask Brother David if he would uh, bless these offerings for us, please. people have already come to me and saying, are you going to have brothers, Brother Piercy to come and sing? So I'm going to ask him to come first and give him a little uh, break before he has to preach and give me his, get his wind back. So <clears throat> you pray for Brother Stacy. We're so glad that he and his family are with us today. We're thankful <laughs> for each one of you for being here. We're thankful for the good number. Good to see Miss Kathy Parton with us today. So. <clears throat> All right, good to be in God's house this morning, amen? To be honest with you, he said he's going to let me sing first so I can get my wind. I, I, that implies that he thinks I struggle to keep my wind, amen? <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to say right there, amen? <laughs> Oh, 
Miss Kathy, can you sing this morning? Please. Miss Kathy has been a long time past member of this church and she used to play the piano here. So good to have her back since when the time she's coming and taking care of her daddy. Pray for pray for Jimmy. Pray for Jimmy Davidson. <clears throat> pray for Miss Kathy now as she sings. <clears throat> Word of testimony before while she's getting her. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Pray for Miss Kathy, she sings. That's kind of hard to follow somebody from Spirit Valley and play all over the piano. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God for being here, and I thank him for being Piercy because they, that family has been precious to me like for years. And uh, it's just good to see them here, and I wish you'd have sung more than one. Because I can't give him his wind back. So. <laughs> but you just pray for Daddy. He's, um, he's really struggling he, just to walk down the hall and come back. He can't hardly breathe. It takes him about 15 minutes to catch his breath. But um, I just, I'm just so thankful that it is well with my soul. And um, I, it was hard for me to say that for about four or five years now because I, I think at 66 I've been through the hardest trial waited till almost the end of my life that that it began to be the hardest trial that I had ever met and uh, I met it face to face and I'm so thankful that I'm almost through the end of it I can see the light at the end of that tunnel because I know he's the light yes. and if I walk with him and I walk in the light as he is in the light I can be with him and he can walk in my soul and he can I want him to work through me again and uh, I just thank God for letting me have a little touch of heaven sometimes in this in this place that we're living in um, I got two songs and I'm trying to pick but the, the one um, I think I'll just go back and sing the song that started all my life living for God is when I was a little girl my mother got up, she didn't know how to play the piano, but she sang with all her heart. And this was in, this is what really showed me what she was when I was a little girl. And she helped me to get my strength in my Savior. And so that's why I'm just going to sing that, take my life and let it be for God to tell you. Okay.
stand with us again. Please turn to number 241. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. After this number, we'll ask Brother Stacy to come ahead. <clears throat> First, second, and last verse. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. <clears throat> Anybody else had a birthday or anniversary this week? Let's sing to ha Heather Cook. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. be seated. Pray for Brother Piercy as he comes to preach to us at this time, <clears throat> whether he's got his wind or not. <laughs> All right, good to be in God's house today. Glad you're here. Say amen. amen. Say it again to make the devil mad. Amen. Say it again to make your neighbor mad. Amen. It's good to be here. I appreciate the opportunity, and uh, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the privilege to be here. Uh, it is good to see a, a longtime friend. Miss Kathy Parton has been a friend uh, to my family for several years. Uh, she's given us a place to put our heads and sleep, and we used to come up to the mountains, and when we lived in the other end of the state, we'd come up to the mountains, and, and uh She'd let us stay um, in some of the cabins that they had, and uh, she's always good to us. And I think she was just good to us because she liked my wife and my kids better than she did me. Amen. I figured I'd hear a little amen from over. But I told my wife, and she was singing, I said, uh, she's still doing what she was doing when we first met her. Amen. She's had her, she testified. She's had her ups and her downs, her trials and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but she's still, she's still just plugging along for Jesus. Amen. I'll be honest with you, uh, Miss Kathy, I hadn't heard that song in, in several years. And I picked up the songbook in front of me and was, was look, looking at the lyrics and they're different. What you were singing, that's the reason why I asked Miss Melissa to get me this. And I'm telling you, it was good. That was good. Uh, I want to say something. We're living in a day where gospel music 
uh, in the day in which we live uh, is just about as shallow as it can get. Yes, Amen. Amen. Uh, you don't hear a lot of songs that talk about uh, much about sacrifice and consecration and things like that. You don't hear that kind of stuff. Uh, nowadays, it, if it ain't got a thump, bump, and a jive, uh, it don't make it. Uh, I had a group call me. It's been a few years back. They said, we want some songs. We're getting ready to do a new CD, and we wanted you to send us some songs. Uh, matter of fact, I think I sent them two CDs of songs, and uh, about a month plugged along, and uh, anyhow, they'd sent me a message back and said, man, these are good songs. And I said, well, praise the Lord. They said, but we can't record none of them. And so I'll be honest with you, I, I thought, well, he asked for them, so I'm going to ask him why he can't record them. I said, why can't you record them? This was his exact words to me. They're too churchy. He said, you can tell a Baptist preacher wrote them. I thought, well, I, some people might not take that as a compliment. I do. Amen. 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 And the fact is, is they're too doctrinal is the problem. Uh, this world don't mind religion, but boy, they frown at doctrine. Amen. I ain't being ugly. There's a lot of churches don't mind religion. They have an issue with doctrine. Amen. And uh, anyhow, I, I want to read the lyrics to that last, that, last, that fourth verse. And, uh, and I didn't, it's, it's no church hymnal. I've got plenty of these laying around the house. I'm going to I'm going to go back home and study on this a little bit. But this is what it said. It said, take my will and make it thine. Uh, can I say something? Uh, it, it, you know, and it talks about the hands and it talks about the feet and, and it talks about different parts of surrender. And, or let me say it this way, of submission. Uh, but can I say something? If, you, if God ever gets your will, he'll get your hands and your feet and uh, Brother Nelson hit the nail on the head this morning. And what it comes down to is if you ever fall in love with Jesus, uh, separation and, and, and holy living won't be an issue. Amen? It won't be a problem. Amen? And my wife, I, you know, my, my wife made a statement years ago, and we were just talking about the progression of our life and how God began to work on us. And, and really, in, in a lot of ignorance, didn't know no thing, didn't know a lot of things. And and God put us under good men of God that t preached and taught the word of God. Uh, but one thing she did, she taught, they taught us this. They taught us to love God. And I'll say something. You fall in love with him. I'll be honest with you. I'm in love with my wife. And I'll be honest You know what? There's some things I do, not because I want to do them, but I do them because I love her. Amen. Amen. You fall in love with Jesus Christ, there'll be some things you'll do, not, not, not because you understand them or everything, but you'll just want to do what he likes. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, I want my life. Take my will and make it thine. It shall, make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart. It is thy own. It shall be thy royal throne. Amen. I'll be honest with you. So there's, there's more doctrine in that verse right there than some pulpits I have this morning. Amen. Amen. And I'm thankful. Thank you, sis, for being obedient. I can see why now that's a pinnacle song in your life. Amen. Take your Bibles, if you would. Go to the book of First Chronicles. First Sunday of the Wampin' New Year. Hadn't saw some of y'all since last year. Amen. Good to see you again. I'm thankful for the privilege uh, to be here, <clears throat> have prayed for this church, have prayed for you. I know you're in that process of trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to find um, the heart of God, the mind of God. And, and I don't have to say this, but I'm going to just for sake. I, I know this and I believe this. I don't believe, uh, you, you know, you don't need, you don't need a man for the people, but you need a man of God. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you something? Uh, there's a lots of men for the people out there. And, uh, but you need a man of God. And, uh, and I want you to know that I'm praying uh, for you and about that. Uh, because uh, this church got a tremendous testimony and legacy through the years. And I know, I believe it's your desire to continue that. And I want to say this. I thank God for the men that he's put in your life. Uh, thank God for godly men and leadership. 
Uh, but I want to say this. You ought, you ought to thank God too for, for the faithfulness of God's people. Amen. 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 And I want to say something. It's just our reasonable service. Just our reasonable service. And, uh, and so we pray that the Lord will continue to work. But I'm privileged to be here today. So I want to challenge you. This is the beginning of the year. And, and I know when I pastored and, and as an evangelist traveling and like I do. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you, last Sunday I was in North Carolina. Uh, most of the week I was in Georgia. Friday I went back to North Carolina and preached a youth conference there. And then here we are back in Tennessee Today, my life, that's just the pattern of our life, and we're in a lot of places and see a lot of things, and so I really wanted to begin this year, and, and, and wherever I preached, in making a real uh, a challenge, I guess a real challenge from the Word of God. And uh, can I say something? You know, we use the beginning of the year as that pinnacle date. You know, uh, I, I was talking to somebody the other day. They said, well, I, you know, January the 1st, I started my diet. And I said, well, that's good. That's awesome. They said, January the 2nd, I blew it. Amen. And I said, that's typical. Amen. <laughs> right there. That's typical. I mean, when we use these pinnacle dates as, as what I guess you would call as just uh, uh, land, landmarks of change and devotion and all that kind of stuff, uh, I quit making New Year's resolutions years ago uh, because I found out that most of the time those things that we uh, resolve that we're going to do, we don't, we don't do those. But I, I tried to begin to live my life that just uh, the, the things that God shows me through his word, I don't wait till the first of the year to incorporate those. Try to incorporate them at that point in time. Amen. Whether it's January the 1st or, or November the 22nd, this doesn't really matter. Uh, but in the book of First Chronicles, I want you to go to chapter number 4. And you know this, if you, if you know anything about the Word of God, the, the Chronicles are those books that there are portions of those books that are, are what we might call very tedious books to read or to study through. And the first nine chapters of the book of First Chronicles uh, is nothing but genealogy after genealogy after genealogy. I, I was looking back through it this morning and I thought, man, alive. I mean, when my, my wife and Grace were talking on the, coming down the road and we were talking about names and people's names, I thought, I'll tell you something. Uh, there are some very uh, amazing names. I'm going to say it that way. Uh, if you'll study through these first nine chapters of the book of Chronicles. But uh, in the midst of chapter number four, there are two verses that God saw fit uh, by his providence to have inserted into the scripture. And they are two verses, I guess what you would call a, a biography or autobiography. Or they're a biography uh, of the life of a man by the name of Jabez. And I don't know about you, but for years the uh, two verses about Jabez have intrigued me. I've studied, I've read books. I Actually years ago, and I was trying to think this morning, I believe it was 1900 and Oh, I believe it was 1995. I was preaching a meeting down in Florida, uh, way down near, I guess, way down near the tip of Florida. And uh, I, we, there was two preachers every night, and I was there for three of those nights. And then they had a different preacher along with me every night. And then one of those nights uh, was a man probably familiar to you by the man uh, by the name of Dr. David Gibbs flew in. Uh, he come in and he preached that night. <coughs> And I'll never forget it as long as I live. He preached out of these two verses that I'm going to preach to you today. And uh, Dr. Gibbs done a tremendous job, a challenge about the life of Jabez and, and having a Jabez mentality, just a tremendous message. And so then the Lord began to spur my heart and I began to study. And I have for years looked at these verses, preached these verses in different messages. But I want to look at them this morning and I want to bring a challenge to you. Uh, and we're going to look at the life of Jabez. I'll, 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 I'll refer frame for just a little bit, giving you the title of what I want to preach this morning, but I want us to look at these two verses. If you'll, if you'll get in your place, find it with me. Verse number nine, the Bible said this of chapter number four, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him 
that which he requested. Let's bow our heads, let's pray together. Father, I love you, and Lord, I'm thankful to be in your house with your people today. And now, God, you know these people have a need. Uh, they need your mind for uh, the man that you would have to lead this church. And so, Father, I pray uh, this morning that you would give them that. I pray uh, that you would send your man to these people, uh, that he could lead them for the glory of God, and they could continue to make a mark in this uh, uh, community in this town, in this city, uh, in this country, that they are, are, are God where we are. And, and, and their impact would also be felt worldwide. Now, God, I love you and I thank you today. And Lord, I know this is our first Sunday of the year uh, to assemble and to worship together. And so, God, we pray you'd touch us, you'd help us. And God, I pray you'd instill. God, I, I pray along uh, with what my sister's done sung, uh, that you would take my life. And God, let it be. God, and that'll be a will, that'll be a choice of my will. That'll be a, a move that I have to make. And so God, I pray that you'd help me to be faithful in that. Uh, God, bless these, this church. Bless the leaders. Uh, God, bless those that are laboring and working. And God, instead, while there's not a pastor, I pray you'd meet every need. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you'll find in the Word of God, there's three things I just want to look at as kind of a, a, a pre-introduction that I want to bring to your attention. You'll find this. Number one, there's three things I want to look at. Jabez. Number one, consider his position. The Bible said this about Jabez, that he was more honorable uh, than his brethren. Now, if you were here during the devotion time and during the Sunday school time, uh, there were a lot of synonymous uh, uh, thoughts that would really, really were intertwined together. And I want say this, we are uh, living in a day where there's no doubt uh, that you can look around. And I, I want to say this, honor and character are probably not the two most important pinnacle things that a lot of people in this world are worried about. Say amen right there. Amen. I, I want to say this. You say why? Uh, because we've got we've got political leaders in our country, and, and I'll be honest with you, it's a common thing on the news. It's a common thing that we're always seeing uh, some kind of scandal or some kind of thing that's happened. And and I want to say this: these are the pinnacle uh, leaders of our nation. These are the people uh, that we have gone uh, to the uh, to the election polling places, and we've cast votes and put these people in places of leadership. Uh, because we believe in them, we believe in what they've told us about themselves, and then we come to find out that with a lot of them, there's not a whole lot of character and honor left. Amen. Amen. I want to be honest with you. The fact of the matter is, is this, uh, if somebody made the statement the other day, they said, well, it's almost, it's almost like picking the lesser of two evils. And I said, well, that's the truth, but you still picked evil. Yes. Yes. Amen. There's not a lot of character and a lot of honor in people anymore. And let's just go ahead and take it from the political realm. Let's bring it down to the religious realm. There's not a person under the sound of my voice. Uh, there's not, this morning you can look around and there's pews that are empty that no doubt at one time had somebody sitting on them, but their lives now no longer glorify God and they're not in the service of God. They've chosen a path of worldliness and they've chosen a life of sin over the things of God and they've done that and they've, they've, their character uh, was trashed and compromised. But the Bible said that Jabez was more honorable than all of his brethren. Now, I don't know about you, but when the Bible puts that stamp on you, that's a pretty prestigious honor right there. Amen. Amen. I'll be honest with you. I, I want to say this. I, I want my testimony to be that that, 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 that man's honorable. I want my testimony, and I'm not saying so people will come up and pat me on the back. And, and, and the things I've said about Miss Kathy this morning, she knows I'm not glorifying her. It's not her that I bragged on. It's the God of her that I bragged on. Because it's been him that sustained her. It's been him that's helped her. It's been him that has walked with her on those paths that she did not choose for herself, but he saw fit to choose for her. It's not the man that deserves the praise. It's the God of the man. It's the man, not the woman that deserves the praise. It's the God of the woman, amen. But Jabez was more honorable. And that just means he showed character. He had dignity. He had renown. Can I say something? There's nothing wrong with that as long as you ain't trying to give it to yourself. Amen. We see his position, but the number two... I want to say this, we don't only see his position, we see his past. 
Not a person under the sound of my voice ain't got one of those. I'll be honest with you, I've met a lot of religious folks who try to make you think they didn't have a past. But they do. We have this mentality if we're not real cautious and careful. Uh, you, you know, the, it's, it's, not, it's the person who uh, lived a wicked life of sin and was saved out of a vile life that now they're saved and on their way to heaven. Uh, they're living for God and their lives bring glory to God. That's the person that has the testimony. But can I say something? It took just as much of the grace of God to save me in my lifestyle that I was raised in that was contrary to the way I raised my children, it took just as much of the grace of God to save my 17-year-old daughter sitting back there that wasn't raised in none of that stuff. Amen. Amen. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying this. There's not a person under the sound of my voice that hasn't got a past. Thank God if there were some things you weren't exposed to. Thank God if there were some things that you never opened yourself up to. But we've all got a past. The Bible said that Jabez had a very tainted past that the Bible said that his mother gave him, gave him the name Jabez, which means sorrow or sorrowful because the Bible said that she said, because I bear him with sorrow. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've never given birth to a child. I've given birth to about 290 kidney stones, but I've never given birth to a child. But I'll be honest with you, I've never met a nurse that had uh, children and had, that has had kidney stones. Every nurse I've ever come in contact with, she said, I'd rather have babies all day long than have kidney stones. My daughter had one. It was six millimeters, not my oldest daughter. And she said, Daddy, she said, I had all three of my kids natural. And she said, I'd rather have all three of my kids natural at the same time than to have a kidney stone. So I don't know what childbirth is like. I do know what the pain of a kidney stone is. But the Bible said that whenever she laid her hands on Jabez, the one thing that was identifiable with him was the sorrow that she went through when she gave birth to him. Now I'll say something. In, 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 in Old Testament economy, a name that's labeled on you was more than just a name. I mean, nowadays, we, we were talking about this the other day, my, my father-in-law, he's a, he's a junior. And his daddy was a senior and he was a junior. And that's a common thing nowadays, the, to carry on the name in different generations. But in, in the Old Testament economy, the name really meant something back then. Not only at, the, at his birth did she believe, see sorrow, but, but she, she was so consumed with the sorrow that she experienced at his birth that she said, I'm going to put this name on him that every time his name's mentioned, it's going to mean sorrow, 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 sorrow. But he had a past. Can I say something? Your past doesn't have to define you. Thank God for a God that can change. You say, how do you know that? Well, look at Jabez's uh, his testimony. He's honorable. His past, was, his, his past was sorrowful, but his testimony now is honorable. Amen. Amen. I'll be honest with you. You don't have to have a scarred and tattered testimony. You don't have to, you don't have to be robbed and, and, and knocked around by this world and, and live in the indulgences to the flesh. You don't have to do that. We see not only his position, we see his past, but then we see his priority. The Bible said this in verse number 10, first part, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. I want to ask you a question. How much of a priority is he in your life? Amen. And I'll be honest with you. Oh, I love the Lord, preacher. I love the Lord. I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, a lot of people tell you that, but he's not a priority. Amen. I mean, what do you hunger for? What do you thirst after? I mean, uh, uh, well, uh, I heard somebody sing this song uh, of recent, and, and, and one line of that song talked about uh, him being uh, what my heart does crave. And Jabez goes in, in verse number 10, to a prayer. We see his position, we see his past. But we see that his position has brought him to a place that it has not, his past has not dictated where he is at today. 
Can I say something this morning? You may have made some mistakes. You may have made some messes. You may have chosen some th paths that got you in, in a situation. But if you can acknowledge that and you can ask God to forgive you that, it, your past does not have to dictate where you are today. Now I know, I know January the 1st, that's when everybody makes the, all the resolutions. Oh, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to do this and I'm, gonna, I'm got, not going to eat sugar and, I'm, and all these things. And, and you know this, you know, it's, it's just the same old vicious cycle. Most people don't commit that, they don't keep that and all that kind of stuff. But I want to say something right here. I, I want to say this as, as kind as I know how and to not sound very abrasive. But can I tell you something? If you want God, uh, to, I want, let me say it this way. God wants to be a priority in your life more than you want him to be a priority in your life. So if you come to a place where you want God to be a priority in your life, he wants to be a priority in your life. Can I say this? That is a good recipe for success. And let me say this. God is not against his people being successful. Amen. He did not put us in the service of God and he did not save us with the intention to try to do everything in his power to see us fail. He's given us what we need to be successful. Jabez goes into this uh, two-sentence prayer. And he lays some things out. And so with that in mind, I want to look at his prayer. And then I want to give you three little simple thoughts. But this is what I want to preach to you this morning. And, I, and I'm challenging you as a church. I'm challenging us as individuals. This is what I want to ask you. Are we going to go and grow or are we going to stay and play? Are we going to go and grow or are we going to stay and play? Now, now I will say this. You would think that Jabez being in this place where he is more honorable than any other. I mean, it was just, it would be like this morning. And I'll, I'll, I'll use Brother Nelson. Brother Nelson, uh, if, I, if, if God was to step down and all these other men in this building and God was to say, uh, Brother Nelson is more honorable than any other man in this church. I don't know about you, but in my, and, and I'm just going to be honest, in my mindset, if that was me, I'd probably say, well, I'm right where I need to be. I'm right where I need to be. But Jabez is titled by God Almighty as more honorable than all of his brethren. But look at his prayer. This is what he prays. Now, this is the most honorable man. This is the man who's more honorable than anybody. He looks toward, the Bible said he calls on the God of, of Israel. And this is what he said. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Now, hold on. If this is the most honorable man, why in the world would he need anything else? I mean, he's done up there. He, he, I mean, he's up there. Can I say this? Uh, even though he was identified, even though he was looked upon as the most honorable man in this prayer, you'll see a very clear declaration that I may be where I'm at with God right now, but I need to be closer. Can I say something, Herman Baptist Tabernacle? Thank God for where you are. Thank God from where he's brought you from to where you are right now. But for God's sakes, if you ever intend to continue to do anything for God, you can't be just content where you're at. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. You know what Jabez is saying? Jabez is saying, God... I need you to give me some things. The Bible said this in Ephesians 1, 3. It said, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Can I say something this morning? Jabez understood, I may have an honorable life, but it's not a pinnacle, it's not a platform. It's just a passing place. Because I'm on a journey. Can I say something? You know what? One of the greatest strategies of a church, of a person, 
whatever, whatever scope we want to talk in, is to, think it, is to get yourself in a place where you think you're doing pretty good and you don't need nothing else. Well, I'm separated. I dress right. I live right. I go to the right places. I do the right things. I'm pretty good. Can I say something? If that's your mentality, your heart's full of pride. <laughs> Heard somebody say this the other day. Uh, people brag about not being proud. He said, uh, he said, uh, he said, well, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a proud person. I'm a humble person. Hmm. Seems like you're proud that you're not proud. Whoop. Amen. Amen. I, I call it counterfeit humility. He said, give me. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. He wasn't talking about the tangible. And most of the time when we talk about giving, and I'm going to be honest, I'm just going to go ahead and say it because it's on my heart. Most of the time we're so carnal that when we talk about giving, we automatically think, oh, well, he wants money. No, I didn't what he was talking about. Because I said, you don't get to the position of being the most honorable with a mentality that money's going to fix everything. I got news for you. I, I come to this reality a long time ago. Money don't solve every problem. I heard an old preacher, old mountain, old Georgia mountain preacher say years ago, he said, money does not bring happiness. He said, it does help drive misery away, but it does not bring happiness. Amen. 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 I thought that's, that's good right there. Amen. But Jabez said, God, give me. Look at the second part of Jabez's prayer. He said, oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed. And then look what Jabez said. He said, and enlarge my coast. I want to ask you a question. I know you're at a transition place. I know you're at a hard place. Right now you're at a different place. But you know what Jabez said? Jabez just didn't say, God, give me. But now Jabez is looking toward the God of Israel. And he's saying, God, he said, I want you to enlarge my coast. Jabez said, God, I want you to grow me. I wonder what we could do for God if we would put as much effort into looking, into thinking, into praying about what, what, more, what more we could do for God and less of what we could do for ourselves. And I know, I know we've got to make a living. We've got to put food on our table. We've got to keep our light bills paid. I know we've got to do all that. But I'll be honest with you. Did he not say uh, over in Matthew 6, 33, seek, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things to be added unto you? He didn't just say, God, uh, he just didn't say, God, give me. But now Jabez is looking toward the God of heaven. He's saying, God, I want you to grow me. He said, I want more to do. Can I, can I just be honest? And you'll have to agree because you know it's the truth. Most of us are looking to get some things out of our lives. Jabez is saying, God, put some more things in my life. Grow me. Enlarge my coast. Can I say something? If he enlarges his coast, you know what that means? That's more work. That's more responsibility. That's more sacrifice. That's more giving. That's more involvement. It's more, 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 more. If God does what he asks him to do. Most of us are going less, 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 less. I told my wife the other day, we were on our way to North Carolina Friday uh, to preach in the meeting up there. And Emma Grace was in the back seat. And, and I said, listen, I said, uh, these next few weeks, I said, I, I mean, I said, our garage is a, is a disaster. It's got everything in the world out there. Some of that stuff we hadn't touched in forever. I said, we're fixing to clean out and get rid of some things. I don't know why I do that. Because we'll do that. And we'll put other things out there. Can somebody say amen right there? Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I'm saying less. I want to get, I want to get, I want to get it cleaned out. But I'll say something. The sad reality, that's the way we are spiritually sometimes too. We'll get rid of some things in our life that we know are not good for us and beneficial to us. And then we'll let a bunch of other stuff creep in there that has no spiritual value whatsoever. Years ago. Brother Cooley, I don't know if you were there or not. I was preaching youth camp for Brother Moore uh, when he was still at Sand Mountain. And you know how Brother, you know how Brother Moore does. He always has a, uh, a missionary in during the week of youth camp. And he had a missionary in by the name of Franklin Booth, missionary to Panama. And Brother Booth made a statement. Brother Nelson, you made a statement this morning that you had heard. You said, I, I heard this years ago, and it's still with you all these years later. 
Brother Nelson made a statement years ago, and this is what he said. He said, the greatest failure in life is to be successful at something that has no eternal value. The greatest failure in life is to be successful at something that has no eternal value. Jabez said, God, I want you to enlarge my coast. He said, I want to do something for you. I want to do more for you. I want to go farther for you. I'll, I'll be honest with you, last year, last year I put just shy of 50,000 miles on my truck. And I look back, and, and I'll be honest with you, come the 1st of December, I, I was so tired, I, I couldn't hardly put one foot in front of the other. But what if this year, it's 100,000 miles? I wonder if I've prayed. Have I prayed for 100,000? Have I desired more? Jabez prayed to the God of Israel, enlarge my coast. Give me more to do. He said this, he said, God, he said, give me. In the verse number, uh, the, the second part of that prayer, he said, God, grow me, enlarge my coast. Number three, look at the third part of his prayer. He said this, and that thine hand might be with me. Then this is what he said. He said, God, I want you to give me, bless me indeed. God, I want you to grow me, enlarge my coast. But then he said this, he said, I want your hand to be with me. He said, God, I want you to guide me. And go back to what Sister Kathy sung this morning. You know what he was saying? He was saying the same thing that songwriter said when he penned those words. Take my life. It's yours. I want to ask you young people. I, I look across this, these teenagers, young adults. Where, where, where's the place in your life? I'm not talking about salvation. But I'm talking about since salvation. Where's the place in your life? That you've said, God, here's my life. You do with it what you want. I want to say something right here. I don't mean to make nobody mad when I say this, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, we'll fuss about our young people not being committed, but I'm going to be honest with you. I wonder how much of, a, of an example they've had in the generation before them. Amen. Mom and Daddy, how much sacrifice have they seen you make for the cause of Christ? Amen. We, I mean, we want, our, we want our kids to be committed, and I want to say this, we want our children to be committed because we don't want them to embarrass us. But how much commitment have they seen in me? When I tell my 17-year-old daughter back there, as I've told her sisters before her, when I tell her that God needs to be number one, has he been number one in my life? When I tell her the Bible needs to be the most important book that you touch in the course of a day, has that Bible been important to me? Because, I mean, they, we, she lives in the house. She sees whether it's important to me or not. It's not enough just to talk about knowing him. It's not enough just to talk about a relationship with him. The, our children see if there's a relationship with him or not. Jabez said, God, I want your hand to be with me. I'm, uh, the old hymn writer said this, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Jabez said, God, I'll mess it up. I'll make a mistake. God, I'll make the wrong choice. He said, but if your hand is with me, he said, you can guide me. Herman, I want to tell you something. Church, I want to tell you. You don't pick a man because he's what you want. You pick a man that God wants. Amen. Amen. You pick a man that God wants, and that might even mean you putting your whims and your preferences aside. Jabez said, he said, God, I want your hand to guide me. He said, I want your hand to be with me. Give me, grow me. He said, guide me. Psalm 31 verse 3 said, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me. And guide me. Can I tell you something? I, 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 yeah, I've done the start of the year and I'm beating the bushes. I'm going to churches. I'm preaching. Our work with hands across the nation that we're doing. I'm not doing it to build my name. It's for his name's sake. I'm not building castles to Piercy. Those will crumble. Those will fall. Those are nothing but wood, hay, and stubble. It's his name's sake. It's his name's sake. The testimony of this church should be for his name's sake. 
His namesake. Not me. Not I. His namesake. He said, God give me. God grow me. God guide me. And then look at the last thing he said in his prayer. The Bible said this, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. He said, God give me, bless me indeed. God grow me, enlarge my coast. God guide me, that thine hand might be with me. And then he said this, that thou wouldest keep me from evil. He said, God guard me. You know why David looked toward, I mean, you know why, uh, you know why Jabez looked toward the God of Israel and said, God, I need you to, to, to keep me from evil. Guard me. Because Jabez understood the frailty of his flesh. Can I say something? He understood the, he understood the fierceness of the enemy. But he also understood the frailty of his flesh. Can I tell you something, church, at a time like this, you ought to ask God. You ought to ask God to guard you. You ought to ask God. Uh, you ought to ask God to help keep you from evil. You ought to ask God to draw you close together and to put his arms around you and protect you and keep you safe. You're trying to make the most spiritual decision that a church, a church ever has to make in the course of their ministry. He said, guard me. Guard us, Lord. Guard me, God. Guard me. He said, keep me from evil. And look what he said, that it may not grieve me. He said, if I make the wrong choice and I choose the wrong path, it's going to destroy my life. Herman Baptist Tabernacle, are we going to go and grow? Or are you going to stay and play? Can I tell you something when it comes to the ministry that God, the call of God on my life? Uh, can I tell you something? I know a lot of good evangelists. You got Brother Joe Bryant's coming. One of the best evangelists this nation knows. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Dwayne Moore that I just mentioned. I, I could mention men and their ministries that God has put. But can I tell you something? I, I can't expect Brother Joe Bryant or Brother Dwayne Moore. Uh, I can't, they've got their ministries. I can't expect them to tell me what to do. I've got to find out what God wants me to do. And I'm going to say this. Then it is my responsibility to pursue it. I wonder if it could be this morning that Herman Baptist Tabernacle could rise up in synonymous union with the prayer of Jabez. Say, God, give us what we need. Grow us. Guide us. God, guard us. Let me say this. Let me give you three little thoughts and I'm finished. I promise. I promise to you the buffet will still be warm by the time you get there. No, I, I can't keep that promise, but I will get you out quick. Give me three thoughts. If you're going to go and grow, there's going to have to be three things to take place. Take your Bible and go to the book of Philippians right quick. I'm going to give you one verse per thought. Philippians chapter number three. If you're going to go and you're going to grow, you go, three things you're going to have to do. You're going to have, to, and, and, they're, and they're synonymous with what Jabez did. Uh, Philippians chapter number three, look at verse number 13. These are familiar verses to you. Look what Jabez said. I mean, look what, look what Paul said to the Philippian church, church at Philippi. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, he said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can I say this? Number one, if you're going to go and you're going to grow, number one, there's going to have to be a dismissal of the past. Now, I want to say this. Now, for Jabez, his past was sorrow. But Paul, speaking to the church of Philippi, he does not identify, and there's no identifiable markers, that the past was really a bad thing. But let's just be simple here. Uh, you can't live in the past and press on in the future. It's not that the past was a bad thing. It's not that it was a wicked thing or a vile thing. But he said this. He said, he said you know what? He said, I, I, I count not myself to have apprehended. That, that what he's saying is, is this. He said, I've not laid hold of everything in the past. 
Can I say something? I'm thankful for the testimony of the past. I'm thankful for the work God's done in me through the years that, like I said a while ago, that's brought me to the place where I am now. But the Bible said where there's no vision, the people perish. You can, listen, you can try to warm your hand by the fires of the past and miss the opportunities of the future. There's going to have to be a dismissal of the past. Not that we discard it. Not that we try to forget it. But verse number 14, he said, I've got to press. That's a forward motion. That's a forward movement. That's going ahead. That's going. That's going. That's going. And can I say something? God has not shut the doors of this place. He's not diminished everybody. He still has an intention for you to go. I wonder sometimes how much our desire to go is. Which leads me to my second thought. If we're going to go and grow... It'll take a dismissal of the past, but then number two, it's going to take a desire for the future. What's your desire? What is your desire? I don't know about you, sometimes in life, I, I told my wife the other day, I said, if, I, I said, if we had the money, I'd get, and I, and I can I just go on record right here, I hate the beach. I just do not like the beach at all. Uh, you say, well, I love the sunsets. I, I love to hear the ocean waves and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I just don't like the beach. I'm not a beach person. But I told her, I said, if I had the money, I said, I'd load up a few clothes in the car and I'd go find me a place down at the beach where I could take a book, sit on the back porch, and I could read and I'd spend about a week. Uh, I said, I'd just like to get away from everything. Sometimes in life it gets that way. But can I say something? I still have a desire. For, I got a desire for 2019. 2000, 2018, uh, with our hands across the nation work that we did, I think we helped 13 families. On top of revival meetings and youth meetings and youth conferences and youth camps, preaching all those kind of meetings, we took supplies and help to 13 different missionary planners, uh, missionary church planners, uh, evangelists. We took a load of supplies to Brother Billy Mitchell uh, and gave him a love offering and helped him because he had to come off the road. That's what, that's what my burden of my heart is. We have, 12, I think, 12 families and ministries this year. But I got a desire to help more next year. Or now this year. There's going to have to be a dismissal of the past. But there's going to have to be a desire for the future. I had a, I had a man that's a very well-known songwriter. My wife had him as a patient. Uh, when she was working uh, at the hospital. And I was pastoring there in Sevierville. She had him as a patient. And I went in. And she called me at the house one day. She said, hey. I said, yeah, she said, uh, she said, you need to make a hospital visit. And I said, why do I need to make a hospital visit? She said, because I got a man that you want to see. And she told me who it was. And, and I said, and he's, he's from another state. I said, what's he? She said, he's up here on vacation. And I forget what happened. I think he had a, a, a appendicitis or had to have surgery. And she said, he's in the hospital. And I said, I'm coming to make a hospital visit. She said, I didn't talk to him. He said, he'd love to talk to you. I went in, and, and, and I'm, he's a songwriter. Uh, he's sung songs that you've probably sung. You've heard people sing songs uh, like Saved by Grace. I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. And I went in, and I introduced myself. And I said, and his name's, his name's Carol Magruder. I said, Brother Magruder, it's nice to meet you. I said, what's going on? He told me, and I prayed with him. And uh, before I got ready to leave, he looked at me. This is what he said, Brother Reed. He said, son, I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, he said, your best songs are yet to be written. Miss Kathy, I put that in my heart because I'll be honest with you, I was at a place where I wasn't writing a whole lot. You know what that did? You know what that one little statement did? It put a desire in me to keep writing. 
You say, preacher, what are you saying? I thank God. Thank God for what God let you do in 2018. But what's your desire for the future? What's your desire for 2019? What is it? You say, you get too personal. I didn't ask you to say it out loud. I'm just asking you to think about it. What, and let me just give you this verse right quick. What did Paul say in Romans chapter number 10, verse number 1? He said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. A prayer to God, my heart's desire. What's your heart's desire? Just to sort of run in the same rut? Or do you want to do more? Third thing, I'm finished. There's got to be a dismissal. If we're going to go and we're going to grow, there's got to be a dismissal of the past and desire for the future. But then I'll say this. Take your Bible and go to the book of Psalm 118. Now I'm just giving you some things to think on this afternoon. Psalm 118. The psalmist writing is very clear. Very clear in what he's saying. And... Uh, I just want to provoke your thoughts a little bit. And this is what he said in Psalms 118. And you can read uh, verses 8 all the way through 14. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to go through all of them. But look what he said right here. He said this. He said, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. He said, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. If you go on down to verse number 11, he said this. He said, but in the name of the Lord, I'll destroy them. Verse number 12, he said, for in the name of the Lord, I'll destroy them. He said this, thou, uh, thou, hast, thrust so, they, thou hast thrust sore at me uh, that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. He said, the Lord is my help and my strength and has become my salvation. There's going to have to be a dismissal of the past and there's going to have to be a desire for the future. But I want to say this, if you're going to grow and grow as an individual, if you're going to go and grow as a church, there's going to have to be a dependence on the Savior. Amen. He's going to have to be number one. We're living in a day where people, people are taking guns, taking their lives, taking handfuls of pills, killing themselves. Depression, defeat, and discouragement is plaguing this nation like it never has. And can I say something? It's plaguing the church of the living God like it never has. And I don't know that, our, that our, this, this great state of defeat and discouragement that we're in is not because there's not a lot of dependence upon him. Amen. So I want to challenge you this morning. I want to ask you a question. I started preaching. I started preaching at 12. Oh, no. No, not 12. 11.38. It's 12.21. If my math serves me correctly, that's less than 35 minutes. But then I did go to public school, so who knows? Let me ask you a question. And I, I know it's sort of straightforward, but just let me ask you. As a congregation, as an individual, are we going to go and grow? Or are we going to stay and play? And the choice is yours. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I know lots of people who are staying and playing, but I choose to go and grow. Amen. Amen. I tell you what I want to do. I want Brother Reed to come. They're going to get a song, and, uh, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to give you this time of invitation. And, and can I tell you something, church? I want to say this. This first Sunday of the new year, I can't think of anything any more important to, than to get in this altar this morning and say, God, help us not to be a a church of the people, but help us to be a church for God. God, help my family to be a family that pleases God. Help, my, help me as a husband or me as a wife or me as a teenager. Help me to be an individual that pleases you. Are we going to go and grow or are we going to stay and play? Father, I love you this morning. I've preached my heart to these people. God, you do your work in the midst, I pray. In Jesus' name. Stand to your feet, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. These altars are open. You come. You might make a decision today to set the course of your life this whole year. I know.
sing another verse I want to say this I told you what Paul said about his heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel can I say this this morning it's not God's will that any man should perish you here today and you're lost and don't know Christ as your Savior let me ask you a question do you know him as your Savior if he wants to die right now are you at peace now I, I like what Brother Nelson said earlier uh, I'm ready to go I'm ready to go God calls me right now. There's one thing I've tried to make sure everywhere I go that people know uh, that I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I, I, when, I, when it comes to the eternity uh, of my, the eternal resting place of my soul, I have no res reserves. I have no doubts whatsoever. If I die right now, I'll be absent in this body. I'll be present with the Lord. You say, why? Because he saved me by his wonderful grace. Forever changed my life. But everybody, I, everybody I preach to can't say that. This morning, do you know that you know that you know that if you were to take your final breath, that you'd open your eyes in the presence of God? If you don't, this morning be a good morning. Start the year out. Get that settled. Amen. Some of you got family right now. You know that if they died right now, they'd step off into eternity. I told my wife and my kids the other day, I said, I've got family I'm praying for. And I'll be honest with you, at times I've actually prayed and in my mind I've even doubted praying because of how hard a case I think they are. But I'm telling you, God still saves sinners. Still interested in saving sinners. He's going to sing another verse you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Savior. I'd get that settled. I'd get that settled today. Uh, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands. You better get it settled. You better know. You better know, I, 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 I'm going to say it again, I'm like what Brother Nelson said earlier, I, I, I'm not necessarily volunteering to go this trip, but if it's my trip, I'm ready to go. You're going to sing another verse. If you're here today and you're lost, you need Christ as your Savior. I challenge you. Young man, young lady, sir, ma'am, are you ready? I need the every hour in joy or pain. Come quickly and abide, for life is made. Ought to be our cry, right I here. Need I need thee, oh I need, oh, I need thee. thee, every hour I need thee. Oh bless me now, my Savior, I come to goodness, Brother Piercy, what a message this morning. If it didn't challenge your heart, you've not got a heart to be challenged, I don't think, this morning. So I want to remind folks uh, that are going to support or are planning on supporting Courtney on her mission trip. So if she needs to get that money in, give, give your money to Brother Michael for that. And you need to get that in quickly. And so please remember that. Brother... Gambrell has got literature out on the uh, table. If you, it, it's, he's working with Miracle Lake Christian Training Center, and this is for drug and alcohol rehab. So uh, you, you can get more information by looking at those. Go by and, and, and speak to them. Talk, he'll be glad to tell you about his ministry. So please uh, pray for them in their ministry. Pray for Brother 
Piercy to, throughout the day and his family. It's, he'll be coming back again tonight. Remember, I mentioned it earlier that uh, Brother Joe Bryant will be with us next Sunday. And he'll be with us from Sunday through Wednesday. So it'll be the 13th through the 16th. So pray for Brother Joe and Miss Priscilla. He said Miss Priscilla is still having a lot of problems with her back and sciatica type uh, nerve problems down her leg. So please pray for her. Joshua Poland is to have surgery in the morning, so please pray for him that this will be until be taken care of and everything will go well. So is there a request from anyone else before we're dismissed? It's good to have all the ones that are here. Good to have our visitors in as well. Yes. Oh, yes, the, the day's the nursing home. Uh, we'll be leaving at 2 o'clock. Brother Steve will be driving the van, so please, if you can come and go, do you need a head count, or are you going to go? You're going to go, okay. If you can go and support him, please go. As many as many young people can go and sing. There's not many there that even come out to listen, but those that are there I think are very appreciative of the, of the efforts to come and minister to them in the nursing home there at the Morgan County Life Center. So thank you again, J.C., for the devotions this morning. It was excellent, Brother Brother Mark, again, uh, with the Sunday school, very, very good, very good. We appreciate each of those that are willing to step up and help with it. Uh, my wife will need to see those that would be willing to help next week with preparing the evening meals for Brother Bryant. If you're willing to help her or, or even cook a meal or whatever, you talk to my wife and and uh, we, uh, we can get, get those meals planned. <clears throat> I don't know what we'll do on Sunday afternoon, but we'll probably on, we'll need somebody for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So, so you, you talk to her about it, and, and uh, we'll get that situated. Please, please, try, please try to be here for the meeting. Uh, Brother Joe normally gets snowed out or iced out, and uh, so I uh, pray that... Uh, uh, Lord's will be done concerning the weather as well. So, work from anyone else. Have I forgotten anything else I'm supposed to do? I'm always forgetting something. So, brother Courier, would you dismiss us? Please come back tonight, brother, and hear brother Piercy.